stalls, spins, and the conditioned reflex. I want you to grab the bottom of your seat, strap in, and brace for impact. Here is a very important idea that you want to pay attention to because it will save your life in an airplane. You might have previously learned that many pilots are taught the elevator airspeed method of control usage. This technique helps reinforce the behavior of using the yoke to control the airspeed and the throttle to control altitude. Many instructors believe that this technique minimizes the chances of a pilot attempting to stretch a glide in order to make a distant landing site in the event of an engine failure. Does it? Yes, it does, despite the fact that there's another brain trainer with contrary inclinations being applied hundreds of times on every flight. In straight and level flight, at the slightest change in altitude, we make a correction by applying a slight push or pull on the elevator. Every turn requires a slight pull on the elevator to prevent an altitude loss, and we make hundreds of turns, great and small, on every flight. We even pull back on the elevator to meet the ground at an acceptable angle during the landing flare. The list goes on and on and on. With each rep, your brain is saying, hmm, if the altitude changes, then pull or push on the yoke to return to the targeted altitude. This occurs hundreds of times on every flight. So, if push comes to shove or pull, and it's a real emergency landing and you're feeling kind of low, what will you do? Unfortunately, too many pilots pull a bad one by pulling a tad on the yoke. Their aft pull on the elevator suddenly becomes a glide stretcher, which of course it really isn't. What's a pilot to do? First, combating this type of reinforcement starts with recognizing that it exists and why it exists. Once recognized, you can consciously override an impulse to pull aft on the elevator to stretch a glide. Yes, believe me when I say that you may be a well-trained pilot in emergency procedures, but that doesn't mean you won't have the impulse to try stretching a glide when you need to stretch a glide. Second, you need to develop a powerful countermeasure to combat this habit. Stall recognition and awareness is one answer, perhaps the only significant answer, too. Nevertheless, given that most pilots actually spend relatively little time practicing stall recoveries, compared to practicing landings, for instance, you can see how difficult it is to counteract this conditioned reflex. So think, train, rinse and repeat. Don't change strategies. Be prepared just to say no, if and when you have the urge to stretch a glide if you're literally powerless to sustain your airspeed, get as much extra stall proficiency training as your budget allows. Not only will you be a safer pilot, you'll also be a more confident pilot too.